and the Amiga 500 Mini has landed. I'm pretty excited about this micro game console as it's really hitting those nostalgic strings and I'm sure it's doomed for the same for you lot out there as well. Now this one is a little bit different when you compare it to the other micro game consoles that's came out in the past. I have done some reviews on those if you want to go check them out they'll be in my playlist. Now this one is a little bit different because that price point is a little bit higher. So in this video we're going to be looking into if it's actually worth that price point. We're going to be doing a bit of an unboxing as well as adding more games, checking out peripherals and even adding some more features. If you don't know what an Amiga 500 is, this was a very popular home console micro PC back in 1987. Now Commodore was a huge brand, especially here, and the Amiga was hitting a bit of a high price point, releasing at about £500, which today was about £1,000, so this is a bit of a premium experience. But back in 1987, the Master System was released as a dedicated home gaming console, but the Amiga was packing some serious weight, equivalent power of the Sega Mega Drive that came out years after, and having those extra things that a PC could do, like print off your homework and things like that. I have to say that Retro Games, who has designed this game console, has done a great job on the packaging and print work. I do like the glossy style around the box, it does make, give it a really good premium feel. Now the peripherals are separately boxed, so we have the game controller here, and uh, I've never really had my hands on the Amiga game controller. Back in the day it was just the mouse and built-in keyboard. Now we're very impressed by this build quality, but the buttons are pretty clicky and I'm always used to a D-pad with the Sega Mega Drive or the SNES. It does work, but that D-pad, no, that is not for me, and I don't think it's for many gamers out there. And there you go, that feels a lot better. I realized later that the controller it comes with is a replica of that of the Amiga CD32, Commodore's last system to hit UK shells. That is why I didn't recognize it for the Amiga 500. On the original hardware with all of its great inputs, there were two deep in connectors, the same as the Mega Drive. I would then just use the Mega Drive controller for its compatible games to get around that. By checking on their website, you also have the option of purchasing the original black variant and a classic controller stick. Man, there were so many of these controller sticks around in charity shops a fair few years ago. So this is not the best controller around at the time, but it does do the job and I'm pretty excited about experiencing the game controller. Now we do have a mouse as well. Now I do remember this back in the day being a bit of a nightmare because it would just build up sweat around that rollerball. If you remember that, it was back when the whole laser light was a thing and that would just clog up to give that a good clean. But this is resembling just like the original. So I'm pretty glad now we got that light. And let's have a look at the front. I remember the touch mouse buttons did have a little bit of a grip. They now have a smooth plastic feel and for a very short travel. Now let's have a look now at this beauty. Now obviously those buttons now don't work, which is a bit of a shame. It'd be pretty nice if those keyboard did work, but it'd be just a bit unpractical because the size is just a bit ridiculous. But it's very nice that they've added this resembling much like the original. We do have the replicant of the floppy disk drive there back in the day. Obviously that doesn't really do anything and the button doesn't move, but it's nice to have that there. And now we are on the back, we do have our on button. We do have a micro C, which is great to see. And then we have the HDMI out and then we have three USB adapters. So that is more than what we've had in the past with micro game consoles. We do have some nice rubber grips at the bottom, which is nice. So that can be firmly stable on the table. And they all, it's all packed in with a unique branded HDMI cables and power cable, which is nice. That matches the rest of the gate of the micro console. And the length is pretty nice. And it does really click in pretty firmly, giving you that good responsive feel. Now this whole console itself has got a decent weight to it. And I'm very surprised by the build altogether. Definitely probably one of the best micro game consoles out there. As the Amiga 500 Mini is a bit late to the micro console party, you won't be really blown away by its specs. It does have an all-winner H6 ARM processor, so around about 1 GHz to about 2 GHz. So I'm predicting around about 1.5 GHz processor. Then it has 512 megabits of RAM DDR3. It's a bit low, but that is more than enough to do its job. It resembles much like the Mega Drive Mini but it does have more USB ports and it does have a 256 flash ROM so it's the storage game and the OS. So let's fire this up. A very quick boot up there, straight into initial startup. We have our typical language choice, which is nice. Now we have the 
frequency selection, which is very typical to home consoles back in the day, especially in the PAL zones, but very questionable to why we have it in today's time, as 60Hz is more of a standard now. If you'd like to know what the difference is between a 50Hz and 60Hz, I recommend checking out a vid I did in the past regarding a modded Mega Drive. Anyway, it is recommended that you select 50Hz here. This must be because the games that are pre-installed here must be from the PAL region. So the ROMs here were designed for 50Hz TVs back in the day. You can test your TV to see if it's compatible with 50Hz, which is alright. And now we are in. Ooh, that is some very tranquil, relaxing music we have here. Before a gaming onslaught, it is packed with 25 games, having less than the Mega Drive Mini, but more than the PlayStation Classic. Though I was playing this console back in the day as a kid, a lot of these titles aren't really ringing a bell that I did sink some serious time with, but there are a couple of titles I've been itching to play for a very long time. But here, we can check out the settings first and see what options we can play around with. Well, let's have a good look here. Let's go on and display options first. So we have a moderate zoom, we have screen fit, and we have fixed size. And we can enable CRT effect and enable smoothing which is, resembles a lot more like on other micro consoles. But we do have mouse sensitivity because we are packing a mouse in this console now and we do have a power LED mimic in the same light as the original console, which is pretty nice touch. We've got some advanced options here so we can change again the frequency in Hertz. We do have the information of the console, so just the release note. And then we do have the legal notice stuff, which is a bit boring. Then we have factory reset in case you come across any problems. But something nice, we do have a shutdown button now on the menu. In this video, I won't be covering every single game, but I will give an overall opinion at the end of this video. Again, it's just my own opinion. We have quite a fair bit of interest and good still to come that I will quickly run for you guys, with test now is other features, add in more games and accessory testing. On the main dashboard on each title, you can bring up some control information about that game. And then by pressing the up button, you can see the save files and you have four per title, which is more than enough. On your selected title, you can rate each one, and then by pressing the Y button, you can then sort out its listing into different categories. On the left hand side below the introductional text, you will then see this compatibility with players and the necessary controllers that the game is compatible with. Whilst you are in game, by pressing the menu button, you will also bring up a virtual keyboard. It's pretty nicely laid out. Now let's check out the display settings. With the CRT filter on, it brings up a scanline feature that we've had in other micro consoles, which I'm sure fans out there of this. I think it does actually do a pretty nice job. It's not too heavy, dull in the image, and does sharpen out those edges. You may get better results by using a 720p screen to match with the resolution output of this micro console. Now let's add some smoothing as well. To smooth out those low resolution jaggies, now, too much going on here, to be honest. Not really standing out at all. Barely recognizable whilst editing, but I'm sure there's a little more prominent whilst you're on your main screen. Now, there are different screen sizes as well to choose from. With moderate, it can be better in some cases, as some games do have different resolutions, and they can stretch full, making it too overstretched, making you lose some image. Now, with the settings set to fixed size, this does imitate what is a pixel perfection mode so the clarity and the sharpest would be at its best but of course the image is so tiny now let's go ahead and download this free bonus game that is provided by retro games website they have provided us with a great simple way on how to do this just head to their website you will find their link in the description box below then you'll scroll down and find the 25 games included here you will see the bonus usb game which is called citadel a FPS resembling much like the classic Wolfenstein, this time around with robot and monsters. First you have to download the WHD load package, then simply drag that packed in folder which is in a WinZip or RAR file, pop in a USB stick that has been formatted into FAT32, any other format will cause problems, then simply drag that folder onto the root of the USB drive. Head back to the site and download the bonus game, and do the same type of job. Simply drag that folder that is again in a RAW or WinSAP file into the root of the USB drive. So you should have two folders on your USB drive, the top one being the A500, the second one being the A500 games. In any other order, this will cause problems and will not boot. 
Now pop in that USB drive into the Amiga 500 USB slot. You should now have a shiny new USB icon. This method that Retro Games has provided us already from release makes the hack and pat a bit less fun. But you can feel free now to include any of your own backups to expand the library. Unfortunately, you can't really include game add as of yet. When it comes to adding any USB controllers, I did try a bunch, both wireless and also USB, and I had no luck, making me feel a bit cornered into purchasing a second controller just to get two players, even though there's plenty of options out there. If you head to the YouTuber the Gebs 24 hope she's okay with me giving her a shout out, she managed to get a PlayStation 4 controller working. And also with her delivery package, she managed to get a cool looking USB floppy disk and a further authentic looking manual. Not sure how she managed to get that, and I'm not jealous at all. Well, kinda. I do hope for some updates in the future where you can plug and play any other controllers. The main controller though I do recommend setting up is of course a keyboard, as this machine was designed originally as a compact PC, with the Mini really consoleizing it. This does open it up big time now with using a keyboard with the games on the USB drive, as this on-screen keyboard that pops up is disabled for some reason. Now I can play my biggest nostalgic hits from my collection with that awesome chiptune music. With the Trolls game, for example, it will prompt you straight away with a question to track down a certain word located on the manual. Man, this is bringing back some serious memories. Now there are a bunch of games like this, this was trying to prevent copywriting or even just for you to copy games from the floppy disk, which a lot of us were doing back in the day. And with the original owner, would just photocopy it so you can track down that word, you just enter that one and then the game will boot up. Today's time is even a lot easier. Well, I think that Retro Games has done a brilliant job on delivering us the mini version of the Amiga 500. The packaging is so well done and the print work is so nice and the home console is just built really well done. But personally with my experience back in the day there was a lot of bad games for the home console and I remember I was pushed away because of the struggles of just the loading times and things like that and as a kid I was pretty pushed away about playing games until I got to the Mega Drive where you just put your game in and you're ready to go. But now with this mini factor and games that's ready to play, this is now a good time to jump back into this home console to see what this was all about. There are some ports out there that just never got ported out to other home consoles and this did get a better version. But for instance, when you look at Mega Drive games, they did polish up a lot more better on that console because the money wasn't there to get the good version of that game ported over. So if you do have a look now at Golden Axe, that does resemble more like the Game Gear game, but the Amiga does push out more power or the same power as the Mega Drive and you would get a higher resolution if you had that dedicated Commodore monitor. I think a good trick for this is there was an OGG support. You probably can get a VGA cable out there and hooking this up to an original VGA monitor would be absolutely awesome. There are some other peripherals that you can get. There's a shop that I came across that does sell Amiga keyboards and I think this would be absolutely awesome for this micro console. But the price is pretty high. It's almost the same price as the micro console itself, but they do look very nice. So I can't wait now to see what the modern community brings now, getting this all hacked up and putting some more systems on this. So hopefully I'll be able to do some videos on that when that comes out. So as always, if you like this video, hit that button. If you want to help and support this channel, click subscribe, leave your comments below, and I'll catch you a lot on the next video.